Chuck Todd spoke to Robbie Mook, who ran Hillary Clinton's campaign, and I wanted to show you their conversation, and then we're going to come back and break it down here. Joining me now is the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign, Robbie Mook. Robbie, welcome back. Thanks for having me. We're almost four months since Election Day. Um, have you processed it yet, number one, the loss? And do you have a better understanding of what happened? Well, th this is hard. I mean, it's hard to watch the TV every day and see what's happening. Um, so I, I don't know that we'll ever completely finish processing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how big a loss this was. Um, but I actually see opportunity for our party coming up. Um, uh, I remember being actually at the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee in March of 2009. Arlen Specter uh, left the Republican Party. It looked like the Democrats would be in control for decades. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everything changed uh, within less than two years. Similarly, after John Kerry's uh, loss in 2004, everything changed in 2006. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to look forward. We have to focus on the future. And what I've been urging people to do is to focus their energy and their activism on members of Congress. Let me ask you this. You see the two weekends in a row. One was a very well-organized protest. One was more spontaneous, but it was... It, it, and you ask yourself, where was this energy right. um, in the Democratic side in September, October, and November when it might have been useful right. to the Democrats? You know, look, I, I, a big lesson coming out of this is we can't ever take a result for granted. And I think, uh, look, a lot of the polling was off uh, in this campaign. Uh, I think it was taken for granted by everybody, uh, uh, and, you know, in the media and, and, and a lot of the prognosticators that Hillary was going to win. And I think some people thought, you know, I can just vote third party or I just won't show up and it didn't matter. I, I think that's got to be a permanent lesson for everybody for the rest of their lives. We have to turn out uh, and vote. Uh, but again, what matters now is the future. And I think the fact that there is so much energy and so much activism is a great thing. Um, we've got to focus it mm -hmm. and apply the pressure where it's actually going to make a difference. And that's on the Hill. Let me ask you this, though. Can you organize it or do the minute you organize it, it's death. I don't you know. Like if you and the Clintons got involved with people, ah, the establishment, um, you know. Yeah, no, I think it's a very fair question. I don't think trying to mold or 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 shape what's going on right now is the best thing. I think what we need to do is provide some direction. No, you don't. You need to step the fuck aside. You, Hillary Clinton. All the corporate Democrats, including Cory Booker, who's a sitting senator and just voted with Big Pharma to keep everybody's drug prices higher, your day is done. He keeps saying in that conversation, we, you know, you know, what we have to do is we have to harness this energy in the right way. And what we have to do is focus on members of Congress and what we have to, we, 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 we. Uh, do you guys see Mitt Romney directly involved with Republican members of Congress? No, you don't. Why is that? Could it be because he got his ass handed to him? Could it be because he lost? Could it be because it, they thought and he thought, well, of course we're going to win. Of course we're going to beat Obama. Our internal polling shows it. And, uh, I mean, right? Right? Wrong. You didn't. And now it's your time to go hang your head in shame. You're the losers. What's crazy is everybody just accepts this. Like, oh, yeah, the people who got beaten by a guy who had a 63% unfavorable rating during the general election. The guy who said, grab them by their pussy, I don't even wait. The guy who said, we have to take out their families. The guy who said, we're going to torture, we're going to bring back waterboarding, we're going to bring back worse than waterboarding, we're going to torture, quote, even if it doesn't work. The guy who was the easiest candidate to beat. You lost to him, and now you're still in the room. Like, yeah, anyway, can I give you my opinion on the direction we should go? No! Go sit outside! You are literally the last people I would ever want in this room. Why is it that the DNC now stacked their anti-Trump war room with former Hillary Clinton campaign officials? You've already proven you don't know how to beat Trump. You're the only people in the country that don't know how to beat Trump. I would take the political advice of a random grandmother I find at Denny's on how to beat Trump over you guys. And by the way, later on in the conversation, uh, I was going to say Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Todd <laughs> brings this up. He's like, oh, it's funny because you guys decided you were going to focus on temperament to beat Trump. 
and it didn't work. Right, so you made wrong calculations every step of the way. You need to focus on temperament. You need to focus on policy. You need to focus on the things that affect people's lives in a negative way about Donald Trump. And you couldn't do that, and you couldn't beat him. I can't believe you lost to him. That's the saddest fucking thing I've ever heard. So stop with all this we bullshit. You're done. Get out of politics. This isn't for you. You don't know what you're doing. You couldn't beat Donald Trump. Cheeto face meerkat on his head. You couldn't beat him. Can't string together a full fucking sentence. Speaks in little punchy bursts. Like, he did- He's a simpleton, and you couldn't beat him. You're so smart that you're dumb. And you thought you could pull the wool over everybody's eyes, you know. Oh, and I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Uh, Chuck Dog goes, where was the energy in the election? Yeah, it was, uh, nowhere to be found with you, Hillary. And you, Robbie Mook. It was with Bernie Sanders. And we warned you, and we told you, and you didn't listen, and then when you lost, they all turned around and blamed uh, Bernie Sanders supporters anyway, as if we didn't have the solution all along. Did you know the poll showed he was over up on Donald Trump 10 points on average? On average. Now, he said, oh, the polls were off. They weren't off. They weren't off. Hillary was up like three points on average. Plus or minus three percentage points is standard you know, margin of error. So, it's wrong to say, well, everybody was wrong. No, in fact, I, for months I was warning, oh my god, Donald Trump can win because he has a bunch of strengths that Hillary doesn't have, and Hillary feeds right into all the arguments he's making, the anti-establishment arguments that he's making. But, Bernie Sanders was up 10 points. He kneecapped all of Trump's anti-establishment advantages. So, we warned you, and you didn't fucking listen, and the polls weren't off. She still, uh, she got about almost 3 million more popular votes. Now, they might look at that and go, oh, well, that shows that this is so unfair. But you knew the rules. You knew it was electoral college. You knew the state you had to hold and the state you had to snag. And you didn't, she didn't even step foot in Wisconsin. The fucking arrogance, the hubris. So, you knew the rules. And the reason why she lost primarily is former Obama voters voted for Donald Trump. Think about that. So it's not sexism, you know, it's not deplorables. The people who really decided the election were the people who got screwed by NAFTA, and they know that uh, Hillary pushed for TPP, they know that she represents the status quo in the establishment, and the status quo in the establishment is what destroyed their factory town where everybody used to have a goddamn job. So it was her hubris, it was her arrogance, and it was her establishment corporate nature that lost this election for her. And... He, he did it there again. Again. He said, well, you know, this should be a permanent lesson to everybody. You know, don't vote third party. If every single Jill Stein voter voted for Hillary Clinton, Hillary still would have lost. Th did you know 9% of Democrats voted for Donald Trump? What does that mean? What does that show you? So there are more Democrats who crossed over and voted for Trump than there were third-party Jill Stein voters. But you don't hear him saying, you know, if the Democrats all just uh, voted for Hillary, then they would have won. Now, why doesn't he say that? Because it doesn't allow him to scapegoat and use the narrative he wants to use, which is, oh, third parties, it's all third parties' fault. Blame Gary Johnson, blame Jill Stein, blame Russia, blame the FBI, blame Comey, blame anybody and everybody but Hillary Clinton. You heard of this thing called Occam's Razor? Robbie, the simplest answer is the correct answer. You know what the simplest answer is? Who's to blame for Hillary Clinton's loss? Um, Hillary Clinton. You know, you know what the permanent lesson is here? The permanent lesson is don't vote third party and don't take things for granted. No, the permanent lesson is Democrats don't nominate a corporate Democrat. Don't nominate an establishment Democrat. Don't nominate somebody who represents the status quo. Don't nominate somebody who supported NAFTA. Don't nominate somebody who supported TPP and pushed for it 45 times. Don't nominate somebody who supported the Patriot Act. Don't nominate somebody who voted for the Iraq War. Don't nominate somebody who was pushing for intervention in Syria. Don't nominate somebody who orchestrated the, the, the coup in Libya. That's the problem. They're not going to learn. They're never going to learn. So we have to make them learn. Look, we're going to run you out of town, son. You're not going to be able to get a job in Washington by the time Justice Democrats are through. 
Because you know what you are? You're a fucking loser. You're a loser. You lost to Donald Trump. You should be hanging your head in shame. You should be staring at a wall in a cave somewhere, contemplating all the shitty decisions you made in your life. <laughs> you lost to Donald Trump, and now you're out there giving your opinion. Like, we should listen to you. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, anyway, let me tell you what I think about this. I don't give a fuck what you think, because whatever you think, the exact opposite is likely true, as you've proven for us. JusticeDemocrats.com, man. We're gonna run the corporate Democrats out of town. There's a reason why. Listen to this. Right now, Republicans hold most governorships, most state legislatures, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the presidency. I'd be surprised if they weren't the majority of dog catchers. So they have everything. And these corporate Democrats who put us in this position have the nerve to tell you and me what direction the party should go in. All of the energy was with Bernie Sanders. By the way, if the campaign season was a little longer, Bernie would have won. The primary, we already know he would have won the general. But the primary, because here you have a guy who is about a thousand and six years old. He doesn't comb his goddamn hair. He's got bad posture. He's a Jewish, maybe atheist, socialist. He had every disadvantage in the book and every institutional disadvantage in the book. Wall Street and the establishment was behind Hillary Clinton. The media was behind Hillary Clinton. And he still won 22 states and got 47% of the vote when not a single mainstream pundit said he could win one state. I wonder where the energy in the party is. Step aside. Step aside. Your corporate milk toast, new Democrat, neoliberal philosophy is dead. JusticeDemocrats.com. We're going to run people who pledge to take no corporate money and no billionaire money, and they're actually going to represent the people. And you know what they're actually going to stand and fight for? Ideas that are popular. <gasps> that wacky idea. Have representatives that represent the people. Isn't that crazy? Have somebody who stands up and says, oh, look at that. Over 55% of the American people want a single-payer healthcare system. How about we push for that? Isn't it weird we're the only modern nation that doesn't have universal healthcare? Isn't it weird that we have 45,000 people that die every single year because they don't have access to basic healthcare? Isn't it weird that over 90% of the American people want a universal background check and we can't get it? Isn't it weird that 80% of the American people want to raise the minimum wage and we can't get it? Well, the Justice Democrats are here to say, that is what we're going to fight for. We're going to be principled, we're going to fight for it, and we have all the grassroots support behind us. Guys, we just started this thing a little over a week ago. We already have 2,420 people who want to run for office. That's not just, hey, we support Justice Democrats, the supporters of the movement. We're in the hundreds, uh, you know, over 100,000 for that now. People who want to run, who said, me, I want to take out Cory Booker. Me, I want to take out Joe Manchin. Let's go after him. Let's do it. 2,420 people. And... The establishment, in most instances, isn't even acknowledging our existence. Well, guess what, bitch? You're gonna be saying my name soon. That's what's gonna happen. You're gonna know my name. You're gonna know it's gonna be lasered into your mind, because you're gonna go, these fucking Justice Democrats just ended all of our careers. The jig is up. It's over. It's over. Step aside. JusticeDemocrats.com. Look, you go there, you sign your name in support of the movement. You wanna get more involved? You run. Nominate yourself or nominate somebody that you know. And what's one of the most important things is we're not taking any money from corporations and billionaires, so we need your support. $27 at a time, we're trying to build this thing like Bernie Sanders. So I want the accountant, I want the construction worker, I want the teacher, I want the union guy. You're the ones we're going to represent. We ain't going to represent billionaires. We're not going to do tax cuts for the rich. We're going to fight for you, unlike Hillary Clinton, unlike Robbie Mook. And... The fact that this isn't a scandal, that this guy has the nerve to give his opinion as the what went wrong in the direction of the country when you were wrong every step of the way. You know what? Go ahead and sit in the corner. You can take a break on this one, Nastradamus. We're done with you.